Okay, here's a rose between two thorns, I guess. Uh, thank you, David. It's never too late for a breakout season, and eight years into his career, Blake Coleman is enjoying one. But uh, let's get right to the heart of the matter here. You're a kid from Plano, Texas, which means you're legally obligated from birth to cheer for the Dallas Cowboys. Louis. <laughs> well, you sent out a tweet <laughs> not too long ago about your team, and this is what you said. Being a Cowboys fan feels like watching the same movie every year and being shocked that the ending stayed the same. There's also another word for that, insanity, doing the same thing over and over, but you're a diehard fan. It's not going to change your opinion we, we of, should point out, this of is, the Cowboys, right? This you sent out as a result of uh, the Cowboys' wild card loss to Green Bay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just the boy in me just keeps going back to just cheering for him, and, um, you know, I always say the same thing. I guess at least they give me a playoff game to watch every year. It just never ends the way that uh, that I hope for. And um, I was quickly responded to with uh, a lot of fans coming at me for watching Flames games and Leafs games and things like that. So <laughs> I, I'm not sure I should have put that one out there, but I was just uh, was off the cuff. I'm sad that they lost that game. Well, maybe you stand by it. Uh, Charlene Clinton asks you this. Should Mike McCarthy still be coaching the Cowboys? <laughs> oh, it's tough. Your emotions always, uh, always get to you right away when you... Uh, have a loss like that so you know your first reaction is to change something but uh i guess they thought better of it and um you know i guess they are getting to that point so maybe they can make a few tweaks and uh figure out a way to make it work with that crew yeah jerry jones announced tonight he's not getting an extension he'll coach this season on an expiring contract would you like to talk some hockey yeah, well, I guess so. That's why we're here. <laughs> Episode well, two of the Battle of Alberta tonight. Let's touch on the game. Lee. And you know what? Honestly, it was, it, you guys in the first matchup, both of your teams were in different places this season, and you both have kind of gotten yourself to this spot of respectability. This was a much better Battle of Alberta. You guys expected what they were going to bring, winning 12 in a row. It was hard fought all the way to the end. Yeah, we didn't like our start, um, but we knew they'd be good. Obviously, they're they're winning a lot of games for a reason right now, and um, you know, for us, we've felt really good about our game the last month and a half. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you lose on a tough bounce. Um, Vladdy played played his, uh, he was good, his rear he? end off yeah, for us all night. Uh, he was really good, kept us in the game, um, gave us that belief that we were going to win with him making those saves, but uh, couldn't do it for him. Your line had the, the McDavid line for pretty much the whole night. And you, you did a great job. Obviously, the one goal in the second period made it 1-1, but that's a tough task in itself. Uh, you guys were ready for it. Yeah, it's uh, what we pride ourselves on, um, being being 200-foot guys and playing against the best on the other team. And, um, you know, the staff shown a lot of trust in us. And, you know, I thought for the most part we did a pretty good job playing down there instead of in our end. But, you know, they're going to get their looks. You just want to minimize how many they get. And um, they're the best. You know, he's the best player in the world right now for a reason. And, um, you know, we kept, kept that line off the score sheet um, and got one of our own. But... Uh, you know, like I said, we just didn't have enough uh, punch tonight. Okay, Blake, 20 goals uh, for you this season. With the season barely half over, you're on pace for, I don't know, 36 or 37. And this without abandoning your commitment to defense, which has always been uh, your calling card. One of the uh, things that's imploded this, this season as the reason for your success is that you're finally healthy, suggesting that there was something nagging you for your first two seasons here in Calgary. Is there anything to that? Yeah, there is. Um, there was some just chronic stuff I was dealing with um, after both the cup runs. <laughs> Never really had a uh, had a chance to take time to address it, and um, you know it's it's never what you want to miss the playoffs. But you know it, it was a little bit of a blessing for me to to get that time to to get my body where I needed it to be, and um, you know staff's been great here and helping me get back. Uh, still was a little bit of a question mark even coming into camp, so. Uh, they did a good job getting me uh, where I needed to be for the start of the year. Well, it's a good thing they did. You're off to a tremendous start, career high in points for you with your assist tonight on that goal. But playing in two back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, I mean, that takes a toll on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you came into here, and like you said, all that hockey you play, it's uh, it's amazing you were able to go through a couple of seasons. Well, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it was a weird, a weird deal too, right, because our Cups were in the same calendar year. So um, you had the whole pandemic deal so the bubble cup and then the yeah so it wasn't a lot of rest but um you know i never wanted to use that as an excuse or a reason why you know things don't go well i, I don't like to uh 
to try to do things like that. But um, like I said, at the same time, it's been nice to work with the staff here and, and get the things I needed, and um, it's been a good start. So, Blake, we present then as representative of your season, the 2-1 goal you scored here against Arizona this week. Uh, this is defense and offense in the same play. Louis. Yeah, you said you pride yourself on being that tenacious player, and you have been your whole career, but you finish the tech check, you go to the front of the net, and you bang in the goal. I mean, that's uh, it's got to feel good when that kind of goes together like that because you're the guy that starts it and finishes it. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, I'm not going to be the guy going coast to coast and and uh, <laughs> bury in top corner. So uh, I got to find different ways to be effective. And a lot of the ways that, uh, you know, not just me, but my line is uh, on the four check and turning pucks over and, and just getting to the paint. And uh, that was kind of what that was there. You so a couple of pressing, uh, pressing issues, Blake. Uh, we had you on this program in November of 21 and we ran out of time before we could ask you about the pickle juice for which you had <laughs> briefly uh, become famous. Uh, so let's get to that now. Are you still drinking pickle juice? I am, yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that just kind of <laughs> caught fire and I uh, didn't think much of it when I had my buddy skate that over to me there. But uh, Yeah, that was in the penalty box in New Jersey, and that's when this whole thing took off. How did it take off? Well, this was my fault. I asked for this on the bench, and then I went out and took a penalty, and they uh, once I got there, I was already in the box. So Gibby skated it over to me, and then uh, I think a fan about three rows up took a picture of that, that right there, and it just exploded. And um, <laughs> Some of the boys got on it. It was just one of those things. I don't necessarily love the taste or anything. It was just I have pretty bad uh, leg cramps, and uh, that was the only thing I could find that worked for me, and it was a big thing back in uh, Texas football, so I kind of stole it from back home and, and used it. Yeah, my you're, you're not the first to do it uh, because we're given to understand that a lot of players drink pickle juice uh, in, the, in the heat in Texas, a lot of football players. Yeah, I think it's just, uh, well, they have, I don't want to go on to in the science of it, but I guess there's yeah. two camps that... Some people think it's just the sodium. Some people think it's the taste, that sour taste uh, with the nerves. I don't really care what it is as long as it works. And um, it was the only thing that could keep me from cramping in third periods. So, um, yeah, I'd go to Whole Foods or Kroger or whatever and go buy a nice jar before every game. Well, there, the, I, briefly, I think you were either selling it or endorsing it. Where's that stand now? Yeah, this was, uh, I did this, I had about 20 companies reach out to me after this all went viral and asked if they, you know, if I would work with them to create a product and um, eventually ended up doing it with a, a group out in Jersey and um, my sister's a graphic designer and a very talented one, so I let her design the label and, and do everything that was involved with that side, so it was fun to have a little family project. Did no you longer selling it? No, no, we, we stopped with COVID. Oh, uh, just, on, yeah, did of, you find a way to make it taste better? Because uh, you're oh, no. shaking your head in the penalty box. <laughs> that wasn't because of the penalty. That was because of the taste, wasn't it? You're yeah, like, geez, uh, got to choke that down right no, now. No, somebody needs to figure it out because it's, uh, it's tough to get down. Yeah. The, uh, the talk amongst the crew earlier tonight was pickle juice is great for a hangover. I, I myself would not know. <laughs> uh, the other pressing issue is your goal song. Is it now Roar by Katy Perry or does it remain working in the coal mine? I think it's kind of fluid right now. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't score tonight, so I don't know where we're at. But... Uh, I think we switched to Roar last game. There's been talk that it might go to the uh, Eye of the Tiger song. So we're we're all over the place, but uh, they're having fun with it. And, you know, as long as uh, fans enjoy it, I don't really mind well, what's playing. Here's what it sounded like when you scored the other night against Arizona. <laughs> there you go. Somewhere my daughters are smiling. <laughs> Well, we know where Roar comes from. Uh, you can thank your father, Rusty, for that. Yeah, yeah I don't know where he uh, came well, up with that one, but uh, well, well, off the cuff. Let's yeah. listen to him. Gentlemen, starting at right or left wing, I'm never sure which, <laughs> the Texas Tiger, number 20, Blake Coleman. <laughs> So that was Rusty uh, when the Fathers delivered the opening lineup in Arizona a couple of weeks ago at the start of the Fathers' trip. Um, you were never really known as the Texas Tiger. He just made that up for some color that night, right? It must have been the football team he played against growing up or something. I don't know where he uh, where he came up with it, but um, the boys definitely ran with it and had some fun. It's sticking? Yeah, apparently. I thought it would be one of those things that died <laughs> yeah. off, but the boys won't they let it go. They take on a life of their own, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Well, here we are beating the daylights out of it tonight. Uh, <laughs> Shane asks, when can we expect the Texas Tiger merch to hit the shelves? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's uh, I got a lot going on at home, so somebody else might have to start that project, but... Uh, mm. 
never know, I guess. All right, here is a vintage picture of you with Rusty um, just a few years before you got to the NHL. Obviously, a lot of memories were uh, recounted on the father's trip recently, which was Rusty's first, Louie. Yeah, how did he end up missing the first father's trip? Or what happened on the first father's trip? When you were in New Jersey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was... Um, that was kind of a, a crazy one. I uh, finally had the, the call that we were doing a father's trip, and he got real excited and, and came up to New Jersey. I think it was uh, we had a home game followed by a couple road ones, so he came up for that home game and um, drove to the rink with me, walked in the back door, and uh, Fitz, he gave me the, uh, the kind of two-finger wag when I walked in, and so I walked over, and he, uh, he had told me that you know they had a deal that they couldn't turn down, and, and they were moving me, and go on home. So I turned around, told my dad we were leaving, and that was his uh, Father's Day experience, was packing up our apartment for the next uh, two days and, and uh, shipping everything out for us. So I um, was thankful that we were able to, to get one in this year. I know it meant a lot to him, and um, yeah, just kind of a fluky deal. Right. Well, on the topic of family, how does a kid from Plano, Texas, where when you were growing up there, you'd be hard-pressed to find a sheet of ice, become an NHL player? Uh, the answer is largely in this picture, and uh, you can explain as soon as we see the picture. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my, my grandma. I called her Rhea, my mom's mom. She was... Uh, pretty much the reason that I got into hockey. Um, she had bought, and bought some star season tickets when they came to town when I was a baby, and um, she just drugged me along because nobody else really wanted to go to, to the hockey game. So I fell in love with it, uh, with her, and, and she's, uh, I feel like I actually kind of, I play a lot like she had her uh, personality. She's just very, uh, very stubborn and tenacious, and um, you know, she was, she was a really good person, but um, yeah, definitely the reason that I'm I'm sitting here today, and um, we definitely miss her. And uh, you know, just seeing this just brings back a lot of memories, and it's uh, it's good to see. Marie Hoffman uh, was from upstate New York, and so she knew. You okay? Yeah, there's you a lot of hair there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. Um, she knew winter sports, so when the Minnesota North Stars moved to Dallas, she bought tickets and she took you to the games. Uh, you said, you referred to it just there, uh, that if she had been a player, she would have been a fourth line grinder. Yeah, she was a grinder. She was, uh, I remember she had her IROC Z and we'd go about 120 down the highway being late for every game and it uh, didn't matter what was in front of us. Uh, I mean, a lot of scary but, but fun memories. She passed away in 1992, uh, pardon me, in 2022 at the age of 92, but uh, she lived long enough to see you get to the NHL and to win the Stanley Cup. So that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. That's what it's all about is sharing that dream with uh, the people that get you here. All right, you were a key ingredient in the uh, 20 and 21 Tampa Bay Stanley Cups. The celebration of the second was in a parade of boats, and there's a picture we want to uh, note here. Louis. Yeah, there's a story behind this, and, you know, you almost didn't make it here, right? This <laughs> is, uh, there's a lot behind you getting up there and holding up that cup, but you weren't going to miss it. Yeah, if you look at my left uh, elbow, you can see it's pretty uh, inflamed and red. Um, you know, about three days after the... This is about the fourth day, I guess. So three days after the celebration, uh, found out I had a pretty bad infection in my in my elbow and had to go to the hospital and get put on a uh, IV of uh, antibiotics and uh, sat there for for one night and they told me you know I wasn't going to be able to leave and I told them there's a boat parade so I'm leaving one way or the other and uh, they had, against their better judgment let me go for for uh, well I guess just a couple hours I got out of there and. Um, you know, was able to celebrate fake drink beers for four mm -hmm. hours, just sprayed them on everybody, and uh, went right back into the hospital after. They, they cut it open, pulled out the infection, and thankfully oh. it didn't turn into uh, any sort of sepsis or, or blood infection, thankfully, but I ended up spending another month on, uh, I had a pick line to my heart uh, with an IV. Wow. Yeah, and we had a, a two-week-old baby at home, so it was a, uh, a bit of an adventure. We went from celebrating pretty hard to just getting by but um, you know made for a fun memory wow so you were kind of taking a chance in that Stanley Cup celebration and you were shirtless and so you <laughs> and Louie have that in common 
Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. That's, That's uh, Rick Tockett there on the right, if you don't recognize him, the coach of the Vancouver Canucks. And oh, You still look yeah. like that? Yeah. Holy I wish I still looked like that. <laughs> no, just a little bit heavier. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, well, the Stanley Cup uh, trumps a staff infection, and why wouldn't it? Uh, American Thanksgiving was special for you this year because you were at home in Dallas with the Flames there to play the Stars, and so you and Jordan hosted the entire team for Thanksgiving dinner. Now, like a lot of people, I'm looking at the at these pictures, and I'm thinking, man, that is some kind of house. It looks like a five-star resort. So uh, <laughs> what are the property taxes run there, do you think? <laughs> well, you know what? I don't actually know because it's not mine. Thankfully, I'm not paying that bill, but uh, I would imagine they're pretty high. Texas is But it's uh, your in-laws place, it. right? It is, yeah. yeah. It's my in-laws. And um, it was a lot of fun. You don't get to combine hockey and, and family very often. And, um, you know, we had a really good opportunity with that day off in Dallas. And, you know, we enjoy, we've always enjoyed hosting people. And it's just kind of part of our, our families and upbringing. And, um, anytime you can kind of escape the game during a long year, I feel like it's good for the boys mentally, and um, we had a good time with it. So Thanksgiving, uh, as it turns out, is your birthday, and Jordan's gift to you was a Stetson, which you wore to the game against the Dallas Stars, in which you went one and one, one goal and one assist, thereby making the Stetson <laughs> a staple of your wardrobe. Is it still? It is. I got it sitting uh, right behind me on the rack over here. Um, honestly, I'm just... I get too lazy to do my hair, and you just throw that thing on and walk out the door. So it kind of just made my life a little bit easier. But um, oh, here's guess. tonight. Oh, there you go. So that's yeah. the answer to the question. Instead of the toque, it's a Stetson. Yeah, it's a little. The yeah, you're violating the dress code of NHL yeah, players. It's that's supposed great, to be a though. toque. I like it. Original. Oh yeah, it's true. It's true. It's uh, it's a little out there, but uh, it's fun to, to mix it up a little bit. Uh, you know, I'd say this about the Stetson, uh, Blake. you got to have it to carry off that kind of look, and you got it. <laughs> uh, speaking of your wife, that takes us to your first career goal, March 26th of 2017. Uh, you scored it against the Dallas Stars in New Jersey. That goal and your wife are related. There's a story there. Explain. Yeah, it's... Um it's kind of uh, just a small town, I guess small sort, small town story. But um, we had a couple friends in town, or I did, that were uh, mutual friends of mine and Jordan's, and they were at the game and was able to score my first goal. Um, I want to tell you guys how many games into my career that was, but 17. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> of course, you have that. Uh, You're doing all right. Yeah. You're doing all right. Yeah. But uh, yeah. No, but you know what we should say that you thought you had it three games into the call up uh, by New Jersey. I it, did. You scored yeah. it in Vancouver, but it was called on an offside, wasn't it? Yeah, on yeah. Markey. So yeah. Uh, you, you know, I let him know Does every now and then. Does it give it to you every yeah. once in a while? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always tell him that was still my first goal it, in, in my heart. It's my <laughs> <Yeah>. first celebration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's but, tough. Not yeah. That yeah. Call back. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, back to the story. Yeah. So it was just uh, a couple buddies were at the game and um, nothing crazy. They just they were. They were able to come out after the game, take a photo on the ice, and it kind of blew up on our mutual friends' social pages. And, um, you know, it was pretty pretty harmless. She shot me a follow on social media, and to me that meant she was interested. To her that meant she was just checking in on an old uh, family <laughs> friend. We knew each other when we were in diapers. So um, <laughs> anyway, I uh, was kind of surprised there was a cowboy cheerleader following me so i dug into it a little bit and then uh anyway reached out to her we had the family connection so I used that play and then uh took her out when i got home and now we're two kids and and building how to date a dallas cowboy cheerleader by blake <laughs> coleman that's our topic <laughs> i'm kidding uh just we're getting into that some more in a second but uh you scored that goal i think your first career goal was it with a straight blade yeah yeah, yeah. And so, Louis, follow up. Yeah, like yeah. You, you obviously guys change their, their sticks and their gear over the course of their career. What made you go to a little bit more of a curve after that? Well, it's uh, a banana curve almost, isn't it, from Warrior? Warrior yeah. sent me the wrong curve. Um, <laughs> I was pretty low on the totem pole, and I think they just sent what they had in stock. Yeah. And uh, I actually asked for that curve in a Warrior just to test them out. And they it sent looked like a bigger blade, too, right? Was yeah, it, was it was kind correct? of big. Was it a little bit more square in the end? Yeah, square toe. Um, used it my whole junior college career. Um, and then, yeah, this, in the summer, that summer after that season, they sent me the wrong ones. And 
started shooting and kind of kind of liked <laughs> how it was coming yeah, off and well. everything was a little easier and had a good start to that season so i just never ended up changing back okay back to uh the dallas cowboy cheerleader factor uh jordan was once one uh that takes us to the picture from halloween 2018 what, <laughs> what is so special about this picture blake uh just <laughs> i don't know it gave me a it gave me a night to uh feel what it was like to be a be a woman and uh, on the prowl and have people uh hitting on you for a change um the scene in hoboken's a little a little interesting so um got, got cat called a couple times yeah that i was gonna night say true or false you were cat called it's right? true yeah, yeah we got out of the cab my wife can verify and a couple guys started whistling at me and i turned around and they gave me the old uh, oh <laughs> never mind as soon as they saw the beard <laughs> right uh, i think we had a bit of video here um and as yeah there it is Oh, that's sweet. Oh, that is sweet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Captain Ron asks, what's a bigger thrill for a kid from Texas, winning the Stanley Cup or marrying a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader? Oh, this is a trap question. I think my yeah. wife's watching this. So. <laughs> uh, oh, there's only one answer then. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have them both? Uh, I guess let's go with family. Family's bigger than uh, than anything. So I'll Good go choice. with my wife. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> we will not press you any further. I don't have to answer to Stanley. Yeah, okay. Um, I interviewed you a week ago tonight uh, when the Flames won in Las Vegas, and I think you'd scored your 19th. And the question was something along the lines of, how does it feel to be a sniper? And you kind of grimaced and said, uh, I'm not a sniper. So why, at 20 goals, do you not now consider yourself to be a primary goal scorer? I don't, wouldn't, I don't know that I don't consider it primary. I just think that I don't typically score the... Um, you know the sexy highlight real goals um i've been able to score at every level thankfully but they've always just kind of been workman goals and um you know had a knack around the net but never the uh toe drag top corner type uh finishes maybe well, the listen, occasional one but. we can support mm -hmm. your case with a couple of goals here that uh <laughs> got some attention <laughs> where did you learn to score from your belly uh, that was from a young age, too. Uh, they called me the human Zamboni when I was a kid playing I mean, hockey, so. I still can't believe how much force you got on that shot with one hand. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I still look at that and think the goalie maybe should have had it, but <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm happy he didn't. And then, uh, yeah, I just, for whatever reason, even when I was a kid, I'd always end up on my stomach after a goal, and um, everyone just thought I did not escape. So, so that was obviously an important one. With one second, that was left actually in the, the winning state. goal, I think, in Game Two of the Stanley Cup Final. So yeah, yeah Game a, Two at home. Yeah, two nothing. I think you're series. selling yourself short. You score some <laughs> yeah. big goals. Yeah, <laughs> we've but we've changed our corner though. Yeah. We've changed our mind. That was a snipe. <laughs> yeah. uh, you and Jordan have been blessed with two beautiful children, uh, Carson, who's almost three, and uh, uh, Charlie. No, pardon me, Charlie, who's almost three, and Carson, who will be two in June. Do I have that right? Uh, Charlie's about to turn four in February. Oh, and, I got it. Uh, so my math was off. Yeah, and Carson will be three in June. Okay. Yeah. I was a year out. Um, and I think we buried the lead because of this announcement that you made. Uh, well, it's, we could go back to that. The announcement you made a few days ago on Instagram. Uh, there you go. Describe the excitement level in the Coleman family now that you're expecting your third. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement. Um, you know, obviously, I feel very fortunate to to have two beautiful girls and um you know they they mean the world to me but it is exciting to uh to get a boy in the mix i know i know jordan's over the moon she grew up with all boys so she's ready to have a boy in the family and um you know there's something to be said about having a son hopefully get to to watch me play the game and um you know it's something i already share and really enjoy with my girls but uh it'd be fun to get uh, a boy to enjoy that mix too and he'll be a canadian citizen yeah, yeah, you might have a little duel here. <laughs> all right, Blake, thanks for your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, there's Blake Coleman doing all he can to get the Calgary Flames into the playoffs. Uh, his third year in Calgary will return to wrap things up at Scotiabank Saddledome on Hockey Day in Canada and after hours.